we are going to collect our product distillate in this reaction tube. We will take the beaker and we will place this tube inside the beaker. However, we want to make sure that the product that we are going to collect will not evaporate off. So you want to have ice in this beaker. And place this on the jack and then place the test tube in ice. Of course we also want to make sure that the round bottom flask is going to be sitting in the heating medium of the mantle. Why, what do I mean by heating medium? Notice that the well, the heating well is much larger than the size of the flask. If the heating well is the same size as the flask, then you don't have to add anything to the heating well because the flask will sit snugly inside the mantle and so it will be efficient heating. However, when you are using a setup like this, when you have a small flask and the heating mantle is bigger, you want to add sand to the heating mantle so that when you turn on the heating mantle, it heats up the sand and the flask is sitting inside this sand which in turn will heat up the contents of the flask. So that is the reason why we have sand. What you want to do is add some sand, not too much in the beginning. I want to spread this sand inside. Now I am going to bring this setup down so that the round bottom flask sits inside the heating mantle. And after bringing the round bottom flask down and making sure that it is sitting on sand in the heating mantle, we are going to cover the entire round bottom portion of the flask by more sand. Use a spatula to spread it out. You definitely want to make sure that the liquid level that's in the round bottom flask is definitely completely covered with sand, if not the round bottom portion of the flask itself. Now the round bottom flask is sitting in the heating mantle which has sand in it. So at this point I want to make sure that the side arm is sitting inside my collecting tube. So let us adjust this level. Notice that the entire mouth of the side arm is inside the test tube. You don't want to create an airtight situation, then you will have a closed system. You do not want to do the distillation under a closed system, but it should be sitting well inside the reaction tube. Now we are ready to start the dehydration of 2-methylcyclohexanol. So what you want to do is turn on the magnetic stirrer. And then turn on the heating by setting the variac to 70. Of course, you must turn on the variac to on position. Many times students make the mistake of not plugging in or not turning the switch on. So make sure that the variac is plugged in. Make sure that your heating mantle is connected to the variac. You have the setting on 70 and the switch is turned on. Now we just have to wait for this reactant to get heated. Once it reaches a certain temperature, 
reaction that is dehydration of 2 methyl cyclohexanol will proceed and you will notice that the product will start to vaporize and then start condensing in the side arm and we will be able to collect it in this reaction tube. So after collecting the liquid in the reaction tube we are going to do the workup. But if you remember, we used another chemical in this experiment. What was that chemical that we used? We used xylene as a chaser solvent. So when do we add the chaser solvent? If you remember, I used the wax pencil to mark the level at which the liquid was after taking just phosphoric acid. So once you start heating this reaction mixture and you start collecting the product in the reaction tube here, you want to make sure that you collect the liquid or you stop the distillation when this liquid level has gone down to the mark that you had made. Another condition would be to monitor the temperature on the thermometer and if the temperature goes above 111 degrees centigrade, then again you would stop the distillation at that point. So the two conditions that you should be watching out for is the level of the liquid in the round bottom flask. If the level of the liquid goes to the mark line on the round bottom flask then you stop the distillation by discontinuing heating or if the temperature on the thermometer rises above 111 degrees then again you would just stop heating at that point. Once that level has reached you want to cool this and then add the chaser solvent. How do we cool it? You all know how to stop heating. Don't turn this off because we are going to resume distilling. So all you want to do is remove carefully the wooden blocks. Okay. And turn the stirrer off. Let it cool and then you are going to add 2 milliliters of xylene to this.